Peace and love to the family. It's Corbin Report Live. I want to thank you for tuning in. It's a beautiful morning. Wake up every day ready to win. Now for those who watch, especially my elite and light ones, you have seen part one. On part one, religion on trial, I gave you the problem. I thank you for tuning in. For those who did, I thank you for hitting the like button. For those who did. Now without further ado, I will be giving you part two of religion on trial. This morning, the answer. For my religious folks, especially my Christians, especially my God-fearing Christians, first of all, to my pastors who watch this, my priests, my popes, my bishops, everybody in the ministries, the congregations, I think the ones who bravely watch this channel, Listen and don't judge. I thank you guys. Because this is the work that you so, so bravely and so claimly claim to grow up from. So there is nothing in this work that you will debunk at all. If anything, you will grow to truly appreciate the inner works of who you are. Because the churches, for many centuries and many decades... I guess you could say try their best to give you the most out of your spirituality. But towards the end, all the inner work comes from you, obviously. At the end, there is no, as my uh, man Billy Carson says, Sky Daddy to come and save you. At the end, your transformation. At the end, your metamorphosis. At the end, your transmutation. Your connection, your grand connection with God will come from you. Come from you believing in yourself. Come from you using your magic. The reason that religion is on trial, because for centuries, for decades, they have misrepresented spirituality. They have misrepresented the teachings of not only Christ, but the brotherhood and the teachings of the Supreme as well. For many centuries and decades, Christianity has took the mother energy out. The divine feminine energy has been reduced, disrespected, and disregarded by Christianity. And the irony of this family is that our females are some of the biggest reps in Christian religion and come think of it, any religion in this planet. I'm saying that the women of religion are the matriarchs, the ones that, the big mamas are the ones that we looked up to when it came to religion and knowing God, right? So I just wanted to get that out and let you know that this is the age of Aquarius. And for those who do uh, study astrology, numerology, you do know that the age of Aquarius is now. You do know that the age of Pisces, the age of religion, is now gone. So every individual right now watching this, everyone who calls herself woke, enlightened, aware, know that you are responsible for your own transmutation, your own metamorphosis. It is time for you to understand now that you are your own God, goddesses, ladies, and know that your inner power is going to help you survive and thrive in this external world. Well, I only got 33 minutes, so let's not waste time. It's time to give you all the answer. I thank you for watching. Let's go in. Religion in a human experience. Religion in a human experience. Experience. I'm going to take me a nice drink of water and go in. The experience of dynamic religious living transforms. The experience of dynamic religious living transforms the mediocre individual into a personality of idistic power. Let me read that again. 
The experience of dynamic religious living transformed the mediocre individual into a personality of idealistic power. Religion ministries to the progress of all through fostering the progress of each individual and the progress of each argument through the achievement of all. Listen. Spiritual growth is mutually stimulated by intimate association with other religiousness. Love supplies the soil for religion growth and objective lord in the place of subjective gratification. Yet it yields the supreme subjective satisfaction and religion ennobles the commonplace drudgery of daily living. Religious growth. While religion produces growth of meanings and enhancement of values, evil always results when purely personal evaluations are alleviated to the levels of absolute. A child alleviates experience in accordance with the content of pleasure. Maturity is proportional to the substitution of higher meanings for personal pleasure. Even loyalties to the highest concepts of diversified life situations and cosmic relations. Some persons are too busy to grow and are therefore in grave danger of spiritual fixation. May I read that again? Of course. Some persons, some people, but it says, some persons are too busy to grow and are therefore in grave danger of spiritual fixation. Mm -mm -mm. Provision must be made for growth of meanings at different ages in successive cultures. Let me read that again. Provision must be made for growth of meanings at different ages in successive cultures and in the passing stages of advancing civilization. The chief inhabitants of growth are prejudice and ignorance. The chief inhabitants of growth are prejudice and ignorance. Inhibitors. The chief inhibitors of growth are prejudice and ignorance. I'm going to make sure every word is crystal clear, even if I got to read it twice. We're going to make sure we get this. Give every developing child a chance to grow his own religious experience. Uh-oh. What? Say that again. Give every developing child a chance to grow his own religious experience. By raising hands and don't worry, I can see you. How many of y'all out there, and be honest, how many of you who were children were given a chance to grow in your own religious experience? Any hands? I gotta put mine down. A lot of you do too. Give every developing child a chance to grow his own religious experience. Do not force. Do not force a ready made adult experience upon him. I did not come to play. Almost 90 videos, 90 videos in, you should know the Darius Corbin channel does not come to play. Give every developing child a chance to grow his own religious experience. Do not force a ready-made adult spirit upon him. Remember, year by year, progress through an established educational regime does not necessarily mean intellectual progress. May I read that again? Remember, 
year-by-year progress through an established educational regime does not necessarily mean intellectual progress, much less spiritual growth, much less spiritual growth. Remember, year-by-year progress through an established education regime, educational regime does not necessarily mean intellectual progress, much less spiritual growth. Enlargement of vocabulary does not signify development of character. So big words don't mean shit when it comes to spiritual growth. That's what I'm hearing. Growth is not truly indicated by mere products, but rather by progress. Real educational growth is indicated by enhancement of ideas, increased appreciation of values, new meanings of values, and argumented loyalty to supreme values. Children are permanently impressed only by the loyalties of their adult associates. Precept or even example is not lastingly influential. Loyal persons are growing persons, and growth is an impressive and inspiring reality. Live loyally today, grow, and tomorrow will attend to itself. Live loyally today, grow, and tomorrow will, a, will attend to itself. Somebody put that on Facebook. The quickest way for a tadpole to become a frog is to live loyally each moment as a tadpole. Family, come on now. How simple is that? The quickest way for a tadpole to become a frog is to live loyally each moment as a tadpole. Let's keep on going. The soil essential for religious growth presupposes a progressive life of self-realization. The co-organization of natural propositities, the exercise of curiosity, and the enjoyment of reasonable adventure, the experiencing of feelings of satisfaction, the functioning of the fear stimulus of attention and awareness, the wonder lore, and a normal consciousness of smallness. Humility, growth is also predict excuse me, growth is also predicted on the discovery of selfhood. Growth is also predicted or predicated, excuse me. Growth is also predicated on the discovery of selfhood, accompanied by self-criticism. You got to take the good with the bad. You got to be able to fucking have a strong ass shoulder in this shit. I'm going to read this again. Growth is also excuse me, predicated on the discovery of selfhood accompanied by self-criticism. Conscious for conscious is really the criticism of oneself by one's own value, habits, personal ideas. Religious experience is markedly influenced by physical health. Religious experience is markedly influenced by physical health, inherited temperament, and social environment. Black people, can I read that again to us right quick? Y'all having a good time? Are y'all learning? Religious experience, melanated people, is markedly influenced by physical health, black people, inherited temperament, black people, and social environment, my melanated folks. But these temporal conditions do not inhibit inner spiritual progress by a soul dedicated to the doing of the will of the Father in heaven. There are present in all normal mortals certain, I guess you want to say certain initiate drivers or innate drivers toward. There are present in all normal mortals certain 
innate drives toward growth and self-realization, which functions if they are not specifically inhibited. The certain technique of fostering this constitutive, or excuse me, constitutive endowment of the potential of spiritual growth is to maintain an attitude of wholehearted devotion to supreme values. Religion cannot be bestowed, received, loaned, learned, or lost. Did you hear me? Religion cannot be bestowed, received, loaned, learned, or lost. It is a personal experience which grows proportionally to the growing quest for final values. Cosmic growth, cosmic growth, and you notice how they keep mentioning the stars and everything in the universe. Pay attention. Cosmic growth thus attends on the accumulation of meanings and the ever-expanding evaluation of values. But nobility itself is always an unconscious growth. Religion habits of thinking and acting are contributory to the economy of spiritual growth. One can develop religious predispositions toward favorable reactions to spiritual stimuli, a sort of conditioned spiritual reflex. Habits which, excuse me, habits which favor religious groups embrace cultivated sensitivity to divine values, recognition of religious livings in others, reflective meditation on cosmic means, worship, excuse me, reflective meditation on cosmic meanings, worship for problem solving, sharing one's spiritual life with one fellows, avoidance of selfishness, refusal to presume on divine mercy, living as in the presence of God, the factors of religious growth may be intentional, but the growth itself is unverily unconsciousness. And let me read that again. I want to make sure it's clear to the ears. Habits which favor religious growth embrace cultivated sensitivity to divine values, such as recognition of religious living in others, reflective meditation on cosmic meanings, worshipful problem solving, Sharing one's spiritual life with one's fellows, avoidance of selfishness, refusal to presume one divine's mercy, living as in the presence of God. The factors of religious growth may be intentional, but the growth itself is unverily unconscious. The unconscious nature of religious growth does not, however, signify that it is an activity functioning in the supposed subconscious realms of human intellect. Rather, does it signify creative activities in the superconscious levels of mortal mind. The experience of the realization of the reality of unconscious religious growth or growth is the one positive proof of the functional existence of the superconsciousness. Spiritual growth. Now we just read religious growth. Let's go to spiritual growth. We got time today. Take me a quick water break. Are y'all all right out there? Y'all good? A lot of y'all go to church every Sunday. Have y'all got that much work? How long has it been since you got this much work in your church? See, the body is your temple. You need no church. You are the church. Let's go to spiritual growth. Thank you for watching. Spiritual development depends first. Listen. Spiritual development depends first on the maintenance of a living spiritual connection with the true spiritual forces, and second, on the continuous bearing of spiritual fruit. Yielding the ministry to one's fellow of that which has been received from one's spiritual benefactors. Spiritual progress is prededicated, or yeah, prededicated on intellectual recognition of spiritual poverty coupled with the self-consciousness of perfection hunger. And that's perfection hyphen hunger. The desire to know God and to be like him. The wholehearted purpose to do the will of the Father in heaven. 
Now, I'm going to read that again. And I don't mind doing the part two on the answer because it's the answer. I'm not going to give you a short answer. I just read spiritual growth. Now, I'm starting off like I did a couple seconds ago with spiritual growth. This was religion. Now, spiritual growth. Listen again. Spiritual development depends first on the maintenance of a living spiritual connection with true spiritual forces and second on the continuous bearing of a spiritual fruit. Yielding the ministry to one's fellow of that which has been received from one's spiritual benefactors. Spiritual progress is prededicated or excuse me, predicated on intellectual recognition of spiritual poverty coupled with the self-consciousness of perfection hyphen hunger. The desire to know God and be like him. The wholehearted purpose to do the will of the Father in heaven. Spiritual growth is first an awakening to the needs. Next, a discernment of meanings. And then a discovery of values. The evidence of true spiritual development consists in the exhibition of a human personality motivated by love, activated by unselfish ministry, and dominated by the wholehearted worship of the perfection ideas of divinity. And this entire experience constitutes the reality of religion as contrasted with mere theological beliefs. Theolo theological beliefs. Now, you listen, you can leave your church today with what I just gave you. You can become your own preacher and pastor with what I just gave you right there. My gosh. Religion can progress to that level of experience whereon it becomes an enlightened and wise technique of spiritual reaction to the universe. Such a glorified religion can function on three levels of human personality. One, the intellectual. Two, the more rational, the more rational. That's spelled M-O-R-O-N-T-I-A-L. And the spiritual upon the mind in the evolving soul and with the indwelling spirit. I'm going to read that again. Religion can function on three levels of human personality. One, the intellectual. Two, the moronical or the moronical. I'm thinking moron because that's what it sounds like. And the spiritual. Upon the mind, in the evolving soul, and with the indwelling spirit. So you need the smartness, the moron, and the spiritual. You need the smart, the dummy, and the spiritual. Or the smart, the unwise, and the spiritual. All in correlation. All in the unity. You got to want that spiritual hunger is what they're saying, family. Spirituality becomes at once the indicator of one's nearness to God and the measure of one's usefulness to fellow beings. Spirituality enhances the ability to discover beauty in things, recognize truth in meanings, and discover goodness in values. Spiritual development is determined by capacity, therefore, and is directly proportional to the elimination of the selfish qualities of love. Actual spiritual status is the measure of deity attainment. Actual spiritual status is the measure of deity attainment. A juster attunement. It was a comma, so I'm gonna put it together. Actual spiritual status is the measure of deity attainment. A juster atonement. The achievement of finality of spiritual is equivalent to the attainment of the maximum of reality. The maximum of godlessness. Eternal life is the endless quest for infinite values. The goal of human self-realization should be spiritual, not material. Preachers, pastors, bishops. Boo! Got them! The goal of human self-realization should be spiritual, not material. The only realities worth striving for are divine, spiritual, and internal. Mortal man is entitled to the adjournment of physical pleasure. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll read it again. Mortal man. Your Bible didn't say this, did you? Your go book didn't say that. Mine did. Mortal man is entitled to the enjoyment of physical pleasures and to the satisfaction of human affections. He is benefited by loyalty to human associations and temporal institution. But these are not the eternal foundations upon which to build the immortal personality, which must transcend space, vanquish time, and achieve the eternal destiny of divine perfection and final order service. Jesus portrayed to the excuse me, Jesus portrayed the profound surety of the God knowing mortal when he said, and I quote. To a God-knowing kingdom believer, what does it matter if all things earthly are crash? COVID-19, cops killing, cops killing continually, killing black people all over. Bills, bullshit. You supposed to be words, followers of Christ, believers in God, but yet you letting COVID-19, you letting the vaccinations, you letting cops continuously kill black people, stop your spiritual growth. You guys gave up on Christ and gave in on COVID-19. But if you call yourself a Christian, did you not forget that Christ said this? To a God-knowing kingdom believer, don't get me started, family, but you already had, so. To a God-knowing kingdom believer, what does it matter if all things earthly crash? To a God knowing kingdom believer, which you guys, since when I was a kid, but saying you were, and a lot of y'all preachers, pastors, bishops have disappointed me after COVID-19. Christ come to me like, get him. With my magical self, with my chaos being self, with my I am that I am self. To a God knowing kingdom believer, what does it matter if all things earthly crash? Temporal securities are vulnerable, but spiritual shorties are impregnable. When the flood ties of human adversity, selfishness, cruelty, hate, malice, and jealousy beat about the mortal soul, you may rest in the assurance that there is one inner bastion, and that's spelled B-S-T-I-O-N. The citadel, or citadel, C-I-T-A-D-L, of the spirit, which is absolutely unaccessible at least this is true of every human being who has dedicated the keeping of his soul to the indwelling spirit of the eternal God after such spiritual attainment whether secured by gradual growth or specific crisis there occurs a new orientation of personality as well as a development of a new standard of values to my awoke ones to my aware ones to my Beautiful, elite, enlightened ones. This is what's happening to you. You survived. Now you're thriving. After such spiritual attainment, whether secured by gradual growth or Pacific crisis, how many of y'all been through Pacific crisis? Gradual growth. There occurs, there occurs a new orientation. And don't pay no mind to that noise back there. It's the phone ringing. Might be God calling me and telling me, good job, Corbin. There occurs, after such spiritual attainment, whether secured by gradual growth or specific crisis, there occurs a new orientation of personality as well as a development of a new standard of values. 
Such spirit born individuals are so remote. Excuse me. Such spirit born individuals are so remotivated in life that they can calmly stand by while their fondest ambitions perish. I am one of them. Are you one of them? For those who know my story and have seen my growth, thank you. But I'm going to read that again because that hit a little bit different. Such spirit-born individuals are so remotivated in life that they can calmly stand by while their fondest ambitions perish and their keenest hopes crash. They positively know that such catastrophes are but the redirecting catalysms which wreck one's temporal creations primarily to the ring of the more noble and enduring realities of a new and more sublime level of universe attainment. Now, I'm going to give you part two later on. How y'all doing out there? Y'all good? Y'all my family. Got to understand, when Christ told you that he would come back, what you thought? He was going to come back with blonde hair and blue eyes. No, no shade toward anybody. Thought he was going to be a different race. You thought he was going to be in California? Huh? With a jerry curl and a gold tooth? Christ is everywhere you are if you know that already. For those, look, Google, put on, go on YouTube. Go on YouTube, family. And I had an old YouTube channel called Lucky Shata, S-H-O-T-T-A, Lucky Shata Jamaica. Something I made up as far as the name. But look at those videos and find the one that says, As We Enter. 2019, right after I came back from Egypt, Cairo, I told you that the churches were going to shut down. Be nice to me, I didn't know how it was going to shut down, but... Or temporarily at least, they shut down. As the age of Aquarius were shifting, the temple has always been within you. Each one of you, as my man Billy Carson say, have no time to be looking up for a sky daddy now. You are the God within you. There is a supreme father, but it's not the one that they told you about in the Bible. It is time for you to understand Christ. Whether you call him Jesus, whether you go by the name that he was known back in the day, Yeshua, or for my people in India who know him as Saint Issa. It is time for you to use your magic, use your power to accept the fact that you are greater. And within doing that, everything that you want, everything that you want to achieve in life shall come to you in God's speed. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the answer.